Distinguished visitors to Camelot, King Arthur and Merlin bid you welcome. We are honored that the wisest men and women from across the earth have accepted our invitation to this history-making event. You are assigned rooms in the North Tower. Please let us know if there's anything you need. Merlin! Look who has arrived! It is I, the mighty Om. You crafty old rascal, it's good to see you. <laughs> well, you're looking well for a man your age. My age? <laughs> I'm as fit as a fiddle. And as fast as a hummingbird. I was showing Om to his quarters, but he caught sight of you and he was gone in an instant. And why not? Who else but the vaunted Merlin could have assembled the greatest scholars in the world in one spot? And what is your name, sir? Can't be. Sing Lu! Sing Lu! Your Majesty! Merlin, what is it? What's wrong? Leave me be. But Merlin, you look as if you've seen a ghost. It's nothing. A, a dizzy spell brought on by lack of sleep. I've, I've much work to do. Please, Valiant, attend our guests. Now that was strange. What do you suppose upset him so? <clears throat> I venture to say time will solve that mystery. you come after all these years, Sing Lu, to reveal the shame that I prayed would stay buried? Have you come to disgrace me before Arthur and all of Camelot? We need to begin. Where's Merlin? I cannot imagine. It's not like him to be late for anything. I am here, Your Majesty, with apologies for my tardiness. My friends, I thank you all for accepting Camelot's invitation to this convocation of scholars, which could well set in motion ideas and ideals that may one day change the course of history. And it is to one man that we all owe a debt of gratitude for conceiving of this convocation and for bringing it to fruition. A man who strives always to lead the way toward a better world. I present your host, advisor, mentor, and friend, Merlin of Camelot. for Valiant. What is this? It has been many years, Merlin. But I see you have forgotten. I know why you are here, Sing Lu. Something very strange is going on here. Oh my, mm, yes, 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 yes. Mm, something very strange indeed. He seems to have settled down. I still don't understand what frightened him. I'll stay here and make sure he's all right. Don't stay too long. Remember, you're in the honor guard at the ball tonight. <laughs> I can have this horse washed and groomed and still be ready long before you two finish making yourselves presentable. Is there something up there? 
spoken to anyone, Arn? What? When he talked to scholars such as these? I wouldn't have the nerve. I'm afraid a mouse such as mine is better suited to eating than to intellectual conversation. I'll fetch some more cider for you, sir. That attack today was very unfortunate. Attack? I mean the accident with the horse? No, Merlin, I mean the attack. We have been friends too long for secrets. Tell me, Om. Is it worse to live a lie for the good of many, or to be truthful in order to lighten the burden on your own soul? That's not a question you need me to answer, Merlin. I wouldn't have expected such a cold answer from you, Om. I was only seeking your opinion. It's a thirsty crowd down there, all right. Who's there? There, now, you pantry boys know better than to be up here nipping at the cider. <laughs> Not that we all haven't done it a time or two ourselves. <laughs> it was horrible. A vision right out of a nightmare it was. Black as coal. All black, head to foot. From what I saw of it, moving like the very wind it was. Mind you, I didn't stay to make the ghost's acquaintance. My dear girl, there are no such things as ghosts. You wouldn't say that if you'd seen it, Your Majesty. This is probably nothing more than a young girl's imagination, but... I will investigate immediately. I wonder if that chilling wind that is bothering you, Merlin, is blowing from the east. But I have the feeling that more is coming of this convocation, this gathering of scholars, than you originally planned. I am not in the mood to be questioned. You've always had a tendency to be nosy, Om. It can sometimes be quite annoying. I'm fine, Lord. Please, see to the others. The blade which did this must have been inconceivably sharp. It cut through three inches of hemp as if it were a length of cheesecloth. Truly amazing. Your Majesty, I think there is something you should know. I didn't think anything of it at the time, but earlier today in the stables, I may have seen this apparition or, or this ghost, whatever it was that the scullery maid saw. It moved so quickly, as if it were nothing but smoke and shadows. What in the world are we dealing with here? Why are you asking me? I wasn't. I was simply wondering about the nature of this intruder. Who he may be and what business he has within the walls of my castle. Been very short of temper lately, Merlin. Whatever it was that cut this rope was something more than smoke and shadows. This apparition is flesh and blood, all right. And I mean to have him. I want every nook and cranny in Camelot searched. We'll find this ghost and deal with him appropriately. Trace. We searched high and low. It's like trying to catch a vapor. We looked everywhere. How could he have escaped us? You don't think it might really be a ghost, do you? No. 
It's a man, but a most unusual one. Your Majesty! Your Majesty? No! No! My Queen! Do not leave us! <laughs> Poison! You have killed her! No! 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 I am innocent! I tried to save her! To try and run from oneself, old friend, is a fool's race. Your convocation is coming to an early close. Many of the scholars are leaving. <laughs> it seems that even the wisest of men can be made uneasy by the pranks of a ghost. And you, Merlin, do you believe this ghost is real? I know it for a fact. It's out of my own past that he's come to haunt me. He's here to expose a secret I have kept hidden since my youth. And he intends to do so by killing me. No matter how dark a secret may be, it only has power as long as it is a secret. I believe it was you who first told me that. I have no wish to hurt you. Lay down your weapons, and you will not be harmed. What do you mean to do with me? Valiant! Valiant, where are you? In here, Rowan! What happened? It, he was here. I've never seen such speed. He was almost inhuman. I wonder what he wanted here in the blacksmith shop. Queen Guinevere's saddle? What could he want with that? I do not understand, Merlin. What has this bowl from the Orient to do with the chandelier falling in Camelot? It is the symbol of a secret I have kept for too many years, Arthur. A secret that has now brought me to the brink of death. This all began long before I met you. My search for knowledge had taken me to the east. I met a remarkable young man named Sing Lu. Like myself, he was a scholar and an advisor to an even more remarkable woman. The Empress Suiko, whose mind was as sharp as her beauty, serene and delicate. <laughs> she ruled a magnificent kingdom. Then, like a thief in the night, a smallpox epidemic came. Within weeks, over half of the kingdom was stricken and dying, including the Empress. I frantically tried to find some way to bring down her fever. In one bowl were the dregs of a failed experiment. In the other, the beginnings of a cure. Life was racing away from her. In my haste, I must have given the Empress Suiko the wrong bowl, the one containing the poisonous dregs. And that is how I killed her. I tried to explain that it was a mistake, but it was to no avail. I had taken the life of their queen, and they wanted mine in return. Terror consumed me. I ran like a common criminal. I was young, and I was afraid to die. The ghost which has come to Camelot is my own. After all these years, I am to be made to pay for my crime. I... I am ashamed, Arthur, of the cowardice I showed in running, and the greater cowardice of never having told you the truth about it. As you have often said, Merlin, there is no shame in making mistakes. The only shame is in continuing to make the same mistakes. Now tell me, old friend, 
Exactly who is this ghost who has come to haunt you? From the description, it must be a ninja assassin. No doubt brought here by Sing Lu to kill me and avenge the death of the Empress Suiko. From what I have observed, you are wrong, Merlin. Your ninja ghost wants blood, all right, but not necessarily yours. You and I spent much of our time at the ball away from the royal platform. We could just as easily have been somewhere else when the chandelier fell. But if Merlin is not the assassin's target, then who is? No! In the name of heaven! No! Cinch has been weakened. It's a clever job, too. The Queen could have ridden a long way to say this book. Queen Guinevere is in great danger. Alert every guard you can find. In a hurry! Not a sign of her. But we just heard her scream. It's all right, Valiant. I'm unharmed. Then I'd best see to your attacker. What is this? What is the meaning of this affront, may I ask? The meaning should be evident to one so astute. You are under arrest. Arrest? What is the charge? The attempted murder of Queen Guinevere. That's impossible. No, Sing Lu, it is quite possible, given our history together, and the fact that we have apprehended your ninja assassin. Hujo, you misguided fool. Do you deny that this woman is in your employ, charged with the task of assassinating Queen Guinevere? Merlin, why in the name of all that is right would I desire that? To punish me for killing the Empress Suiko. It can't be. You have spent all these years thinking that you killed her. But I did. With this. No, Merlin. The Empress did die. But it was not at your hand. You were working so hard that night. You were so intent on saving her life. You are blind to those with darker motives. Ujen, the old advisor, was jealous of you and suspicious of your Western influence. And to my eternal shame, at first, I too suspected you. Later, the truth was learned. The only ones who refused to believe it were a small group of political fanatics. Many of them were members of Wu Jian's family. This evil creature is Wu Jian's granddaughter. She is a ninja, an assassin without honor. 
when word reached our country of a convocation to be hosted by a scholar named Merlin. She must have come to Camelot in search of you, as I did. She has grown up with hatred in her heart. It is her heritage. Let it not be ours. I am in Camelot to beg your forgiveness for ever having suspected you and for not finding a way to help you when you were so desperately in need. There is no need for forgiveness. The past is gone. It was good to see you again, Singlu. I am so happy that we did not remain lost from each other, my friends. Merlin always seemed to be so flawless. It's surprising to know that even he could be haunted by the mistakes of the past. All of us are flawed valiants in one way or another. But our hope lies in knowing that if we can learn from the mistakes of the past, we can use that knowledge to light our way into the future. <laughs>